back again for potentially the last year in North America is the Ford Transit Connect. Now, the one in behind me is the cargo van, but we still do have the passenger van available there as an option. Now, I did say that it's potentially the last year. Few reasons why. The Transit Connect, it looks like, is getting discontinued in North America. But having said that, there were also talks that the next generation would be built on the same platform as the Escape, the Maverick, and the Bronco Sport. So as of right now, it hasn't officially been announced, but it does look like this might be the last production year in North America. But having said that, apparently this thing still will be available for the European market after 2023. And that's gonna be under the Turnio. So what this thing is known as in the European market. Now, there aren't any changes from the 22 to the 23 model. So we are still looking at either the cargo van or the passenger van. In the cargo van, it's gonna be either the short or the long wheelbase, depending on if you're in Canada or in the US. Because in Canada, we're strictly looking at the long wheelbase as an option, but you do have that shorty if you're down in the States. But the Transit Connect van, it's nice, it's nimble. If you wanna use it as like a micro camper van, you can do that. You wanna do some basic upfitting inside for your electrical business, it's got that flexibility. And these things are great delivery vans too. I'm actually kind of sad that this thing might get discontinued. Let's look at some basics of this vehicle because it still is fairly sharp. Filling up fuel inside of the Transit Connect is very straightforward. So just along our passenger side, we've got an unlocked system and it's capless at the same time. So just insert, fill up, and you're good to go. Minimum manufacturer's recommendation for the Transit Connect, just regular 87 gas. So regular fuel is all you need to use inside of this thing. If you wanted to run something like an 89 or a 91, you could. It's just not necessary. Underneath the hood of the Transit Connect, we do have this, the regular two liter. It's super straightforward and very easy to access everything. So we can top up all of our fluids, check change our oil, easy access to the battery on top of that. So it is very straightforward. Power wise, this thing doesn't really have much to write home about. It's a pretty small engine and it's non-turbocharged at the same time. But with it being non-turbo, so naturally aspirated, that's just like one less thing we have to worry about from a maintenance perspective. But just make sure you're regularly maintaining your vehicle, so regularly scheduled maintenance, and then just make sure you take it in for regular oil changes as needed. But other than that, this thing is nice and simple. We have our traditional headlamps there with fogs down below. Now, when we get into the XLT, that's when we've got the fogs because the regular XL van unfortunately doesn't have the fog as an option. One other nicety when you get into the XLT, we've got the option for the forward sensing system. Now, this one doesn't have the forward sensors. It does at least have the reverse sensing system, but it is nice to know that you could get those front sensors if you want them. We've got just our regular Ford blue oval right in the middle there, so in our grill. But outside of that, front end is straightforward. Looking at the drivetrain for the Transit Connect, it's strictly going to be available front wheel drive. And you're only looking at 16 inch wheels as an option. So it doesn't matter if you're in the XL or XLT, strictly looking at the 16 inch. But trying to get your hands on one of these things is also slightly tricky right now. Check with your selling dealer, Formula Ford here in Pickering, great dealership to work with. And I know they do have a few more incoming. You could technically also put through a factory order right now. The order bank still is open. So if you do want one of these things, you want to use it as a micro van for camping, or if you have some upfitting needs for your business, you want to check with Formula Ford to see if they can help you out putting through an order on one of these. So just for like a little point of comparison here, I'm six feet tall. And like I still have headspace over and above. So this thing is not a big van by any stretch of the imagination. So if you are, like I said, looking for something bigger, you could always go for the full-size transit instead, whether that's the low, medium, or high roof. But this thing, nice, nimble, it's pretty small at the same time. Towards the back end of the Transit Connect, pretty straightforward. We've got our Transit Connect badge along the left side, XLT badge along the right side. Obviously gonna be different if you're in the XL. And then we've got our Ford logo along the bottom right. Now from there, we've got our backup camera. It's a North American safety standard. You're always gonna get that. Now this one does have the optional reverse sensing system that you're gonna find inside of the Transit Connect. You do have an option for a package where you can get the forward and the reverse sensing system. So it's gonna depend on what you want out of it. 
forward sensing system is nice because if you're going to constantly be parking this thing, you can see exactly what's going on in the front and rear as you go. But matter of preference there. This one clearly doesn't have any sort of hitch from the factory. But if we are looking at towing, we're going to max out at 2,000 pounds. Payload for this thing is pretty respectable for a vehicle this size. This one as configured, I believe is 1,637 pounds, give or take. So it is nice we've got that as an option, but if you're looking for something a little bit more robust for towing and for payload, you could look at just the regular size transit instead. So we could look at that low roof, regular length transit, full size. Getting inside of this thing is straightforward. So we've got our dual doors here. And the dual cargo doors are fairly useful. One other cool thing about them is we've got little buttons that we can push if we want to swing these things open. So it is very useful if you're going to be loading in different types of cargo and things like that. But when we look at the transit van in general, we've got a few different ways we can configure this thing. So we've got our dual cargo doors. There's also an option for a lift gate. This specific one also does have dual sliding doors. So one on the driver and the passenger side. So you do have a few different options when we look at configurations of this vehicle. And I always say it, it's going to depend on what you personally need. Some basics back here, nothing off to the left, off to the right. We only have a little 12 volt power point. Another thing to highlight is we do have this little guy right here, and that's going to be to release our spare tire that's located just underneath the vehicle. But nice and simple, very straightforward, but you got to take a look at the size of this thing. So taking a peek at the cargo measurements for this thing, it does have a pretty decent size to it. Now, having said that, it's technically not going to be big enough if you want to throw in sheets of plywood. So it's just not quite long enough. We would have to look at the full size transit if we wanted to go that route. But like I said, we can go for that low roof, regular length if we wanted to go that route. So if you do want to walk through the full size transit, check down in the description of the video. But like I said, I'm six feet tall. So if your plan is to make this thing into a camper van, you can totally do it. I still have like six plus inches of headspace there on top of that. So, I mean, if you wanted to create like a little camper van, you've got that flexibility. We do have our finished flooring down here, some finished elements along the side on top of that. And then we've got six little tie down hooks. So nice and simple. We've got some lights strategically placed on the inside of the vehicle here on top of that. Another thing to point out, headspace. So like I said, I'm six feet tall and <laughs> It's like a, like a little bit tight here. Yeah. Yeah. Like there's zero chance that like on my knees, I'm not getting all the way up. I'm like, uh. <laughs> so just go in knowing uh, headspace, not too crazy. But I mean, at the same time, if you're just laying down because you've got a little bed back there, more than enough space for what you might need. Looking at the first row of the Transit Connect van, this thing is straightforward. Like I said, this is going to be the Transit Connect XLT. So we've got a few other things default that are not going to be standard inside of the XL version of the vehicle. But like really when you play with the numbers, it just makes more sense to go for the XLT instead because of some of the extras that you get. But let's go over some highlights. So along the door, straightforward, our unlock lock buttons. We've got controls for our windows as well as our side view mirrors. Now, one little thing about the side view mirrors is that we've got our main glass and then there's like this tiny little like convex mirror at the top of it. And that's something that we would have to manually adjust. Just by the left knee, we've got a series of other buttons that are available. So we've got one for our fog lamps, figure out what's going on with our running lamps. And then we've got another one to control the brightness of the cluster screen as well as the multimedia screen. Now the wheel itself, straightforward. We've got our blue Ford logo right in the very middle series of controls on the left side to figure out what's going on with our little cluster screen. But if you want to walk through on how to use these steering wheel buttons, the instrument cluster, or the Sync 3 media screen, check down in the description of the video. I've put together comprehensive videos that show how everything works. But some basics, so pad on the left side, like I said, does let us control the cluster screen. On the right side, we've got our volume rocker. We can change songs, radio stations. We've also got a little voice command prompt. So we'd be able to do things like change songs, radio stations with our voice. If we had factory navigation, we'd also be able to control that using our voice too. Um, now one other cool thing is that if we're hooked up through Android Auto or Apple CarPlay, we could also do a longer press and hold in order to activate either our Google or Siri Assistant, which is kind of nice.
we've got all of our cruise control buttons on the side there. And then the steering wheel inside of this thing is going to be a manual telescoping. So between our legs there, we've got a little release and then we're just gonna adjust it as necessary, click it in order to lock it back into place. But super straightforward on the left side or left turning stick, I should say. So that is obviously for our blinkers, for our high beams. There's a button on the tip of that stick and that's gonna to be to turn our lane keeping system on or off. Stick on the right side is gonna be for our windshield wipers, but it's straightforward. Now, one thing, we are going to be just a traditional key inside of the Transit Connect. So we don't have the option for push button start inside of this thing. But shooting over, we do have our basic vent controls. The Sync 3 media screen is going to be standard in the XLT, but it's optional inside of the XL. So I honestly, I just recommend going for that, the larger Sync 3 screen. It's a 6.5 inch, but it gives you Android Auto, Apple CarPlay support, and it's just more robust. Like, it is technically the last generation system, but the one in the regular sync screen is like the previous gen from this. So honestly, it's just worth a couple extra bucks to go for the larger sync three screen instead. But this thing is really straightforward. We've got our basic home screen. If you had factory navigation, that would show up as an available option here. But for basics, we've got our entertainment sources. So AM, FM, Sirius XM, Bluetooth. So we could hook up our phone over Bluetooth and listen to our audio on our phone. If we were hooked up through Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, we could plug it, we could essentially play any music through that as well. So you've got some options there. It's kind of nice. But I mean, the, auto the audio inside of this thing, it's amazing. Like Sam Roberts band, amazing song, amazing band, but the audio. So this thing is turned up halfway and it's got pretty decent volume out of it. So it is nice that we've got that standard inside of this thing and we've got speakers strategically placed throughout the vehicle here. But some other basics of the Sync 3 screen, we can easily hook up phones, like I said, either over Bluetooth or Android Auto, Apple CarPlay using USB. So we do have to be connected and that's just through our center stack there. So we've got USB, USB-C, which I'll touch on in just a second. But through the screen here, we've got an app setting and then just a series of basic vehicle settings on top of that. Shooting over, we do have some basic controls for our audio, tuning rocker. If you have a phone that supports wireless charging, we've got a wireless charge pad inside of the XLT. Down from there, we've got our basic vent controls and a series of different climate control settings. We are just going to be regular, so single zone climate control inside of this. Moving down a bit more, let's uh, toss you into drive there. We've got a series of other buttons. So an eco button, and that's gonna put us into economy mode, essentially. We can turn our traction control system on or off. And then we've got our start stop button. And the start stop is the one that's potentially gonna kill power to the engine if we come to a complete stop. It's nice that's available there as an option, but if it drives you crazy, you could technically disable it. You have to disable it every time the vehicle starts up again now, so. But from here, we've got just a regular shifter, which is great. We've got our park reverse neutral drive and we can drop it into a manual mode because we've got little buttons on the inside of the shifter. So next to where our body is on the driver's side, plus minus buttons there, which is kind of cool. Moving down, we've got a few power points like I was mentioning. So a USB, USB-C, traditional 12 volt power point. We've got a few cup holders, little storage tray, manual parking brake. And then there's also a little armrest there with a decent amount of storage for the size of it. And it's just storage, so we don't have any sort of USB power points or any other power points in there at all. Now, as we shift up overhead, we don't have any sort of rear view mirror in this thing because we wouldn't be able to see it because there's no windows in the back. And that's obviously because this is the cargo version of the vehicle. But if you were in the passenger version, you would, but it's just not gonna be here because we're in the cargo. So from there, we've got a series of buttons in order to control what's going on with our lights. We don't have any sort of sunglasses holder here, but we do have giant visor with a vanity mirror that's built in, a little business card holder, and this thing extends out. Oh my God, so far, so far. It, it's a little flimsy when it goes out all the way, but it is nice to know Ugh, that's available there as an option. Now over and above that, we do have this nice storage tray right over its head as well, which is kind of nice. Maps, storage, junk, whatever the case may be, it is there. But this is straightforward. Now the seats inside of this thing, they're actually not bad. So it's, it's a fairly comfortable seat. And this is just like a regular cloth seat. We do have a few different ways that we can adjust it. So with the seat as far down as it'll go, 
oh, it's still so like even without it down like i've got like what's like a foot plus of headspace there so the way that i would typically drive it myself even still like so so much headspace which is great but we've got a series of different switches along our left side. So all manual adjust inside of the XL XLT. So we can go up down with it. We've got one a bit further back to adjust our backrest. And then if we want to adjust what's going on with our seat, so how close we are, we've got a little lever in between our legs. So just sliding back and forth there. And that's the same for the driver passenger side. And then we've also got this little guy on the outside of the, or technically inside of the seats in the middle and that's going to be for our manual lumbar support so we could adjust that if we want to on the driver's side and that's just going to be for the driver's side but as a basic features styling wise inside of this it's basic it's simple it's a cargo van it gets you from a to b like i said the upfitting potential is where this is at so i'm hoping that ford ends up bringing this thing onto the c2 platform which is the same as the escape the maverick and the hybrid I'm like oh fingers crossed that'd be cool so then you can get an all-wheel drive version of this on top of that but it's going to depend on how much demand they have for it and that was a look at the 2023 ford transit connect cargo van what'd you think nice and simple but if you have any questions drop down in the comment section below and let me know more than willing to talk you through any issues that you might be having but if you found this one useful, give it a thumbs up, share it with someone if you think it might help them. And until I see you next time, take care. But we still do have the passion. What this thing is known. If you had factory navigation, that would show up as an option here. Very straightforward. Just along our driver's side. That's the passenger side. Yeah. <laughs>